Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to 30 Days to Greatness, day three. We are very excited to be here with you today. Uh, we're going to have a lot to cover in a short period of time. We will hopefully keep it fast-paced and fun for you. Um, I'm going to go ahead here and share my screen, and I wanted to uh, give you a couple items of value right off the bat. Um, if you have not already seen it uh, from last night, I was kind of feeling myself and feeling us a little bit. So uh, on my Instagram and TikTok and a couple other places, I posted a video that went over something that I think will resonate with you today. It is what it looks like when you um, enter a text code and start working with us using Project X and uh, our, our digital tools, which we're going to go over in completion today. You're going to understand them completely by the time we're done. So this is kind of a fun little um, video that I did. We can keep the music off for you, but it's walking you through what happens when someone texts in front of a property that has our text code text exit to 85377, or if they go into the property and see that text code that you're going to have at the property, this is cutting edge stuff, guys. Nobody else is doing this. A few of you were with me at the open house last night, and it was really fun to watch the reaction of a couple agents and a couple consumers that had never seen property documents in a text code before. Um, had never seen everything so well organized in the listing. And uh, this is all easy stuff that you guys can do. It's all free and it's all done basically for you. Just have to plug and play and put it all together. So um, that little piece from last night, um, there's a couple of people that have privately messaged me. Uh, got a lot of comments on uh, one of the uh, social media that I posted it on because people were going, what is that tool? I said, well, that's a combination of tools. That is the exit geolocational signage and the text codes, uh, as well as some good marketing. And then uh, more importantly, along with that Zen list and explaining people, walking people through all the power of those tools combined together. So some stuff that nobody else has, and it is right at your fingertips. So how do you get to it and how do you apply it in a situation like an open house? Well, again, we had a great open house last night. There's uh, Victoria and uh, and uh, another one of our agents that are are there together, Abraham, um, sitting there and kind of enjoying our, our little setup there. We had 19 total buyer groups through. Uh, we have a second showing and an offer coming in from that. So we are very excited. Um, obviously, if you still want to show that property, it's not sold yet. But uh, we had a lot of great traction. And the issue always is with open houses is people say, well, do they work? And your sellers want them. And I think they deserve them, but you as an agent deserve the highest possible likelihood of not only selling that property, but getting leads from buyers and sellers in the neighborhood. So Exit's come up with some tools and I have worked with corporate on amending some of those tools to get, create some cutting edge product. And then also in addition to that, you have some other major things in our arsenal like Zenless and Wise Agent. So every single one of those people that came through last night had to get in using uh, my cell phone. They had to text me. They didn't, it didn't say call. It didn't say text my business card. It said, text me to get in the open house. And that is something that a couple of people that were there that are our agents said, well, why didn't you just prop the door? Why didn't you just tell them to buzz in? Because there was a buzzer. I don't do that. And COVID has given us license to lock doors and just in security in general. Um, front gates, uh, keep them locked. The neighbors don't want them open anyway. Even in a single family home, you don't want people roaming the yard. This is a way to get lead capture and create a digital sign in. If you guys have a lot of uh, paper and pen anywhere anymore, guess what? You are out of touch. You are out of date. And everybody that walked through and I was talking to last night, uh, a couple of the other agents realized what I was doing and they're going, well, what do you do next? This is genius. You fought, you actually, there's no sign-in sheet. They have to text you to get in. I said, yes, they do. And then if they want the rest of the information on the property, they have to text this code. So we'll go over all of this. You also have in your Project X toolkit, you have an entire toolkit now 
just for open houses. We're going to walk through all of these items as well. I'm going to show you how to get all of this done so that the bottom line is at the end of the day, whether you are an agent with a listing of your own, upcoming or sitting there on the market that we got to work on, or you are an agent that wants to start sitting open houses for a busy agent uh, at this office, the beauty of being in a big but not too big office that's kind of a, a, a well-balanced atmosphere and a very geographically diverse office is that you have a huge amount of opportunities for open houses. And I want to show you, uh, you know, I send out pretty periodically those uh, reports of, oh, here's our listing inventory. Well, all of our listing inventory, guys, is right on our website, which is exitstrategymovesyou.com. If you haven't been on that website, you should check it out. Um, every single one of our properties that's on the open MLS is right there under featured properties. So every single one of our properties on the MLS is featured, uh, sales, rentals, all good stuff. And there's 161 active listings between our four offices, 161 active listings. That's a lot of opportunity for you to be sitting in open house near you. And whether it's for sale or for rent, um, yes, we do rental open houses too. It's sometimes a great way to get more people through and turn around and get them again, hooked up on the same tools you would as a, uh, seller or buyer's agent because Zenlist works for rentals as well. It's there it's meant for commercial properties. You should be sitting open houses everywhere at this point, <laughs> maybe not vacant land in the middle of winter, but, uh, we have such beautiful listing inventory and most of our agents are more than happy to have you sit uh, at one of these open houses. So check that out. If you want to see an up-to-date group of listings, you can, of course, sort them by newest, oldest, highest price, lowest price, and they're geographically everywhere. So go on our website to do that. But why are we here in the first place? Well, guess what? I got a slideshow for you. And that slideshow is really hopefully going to make you more excited about open houses. I don't think that our agents or any agents uh, in this market are doing enough open houses because you need to get more buyers and you need to get your listings sold. What we know before we go any further that's not in these slides is if you are putting a property on the MLS or it's already on the MLS and you add an open house, it automatically goes to the top of the portals in many different portals. So you are automatically giving yourself a boost in visibility be just based on the fact you're having an upcoming open house. But beyond that, there are many strategies we're going to go over today, specifically 11 of them. You may have heard there's like a seventh level open house training floating around from a competitor. I've sat through that training many times over the years. I have an 11 step program. It's not 12 steps. That's a different project. Um, 11 step program uh, to get you truly into a productive open house. So not every open house is going to have 19 people through and, and multiple activities out of it. But, but a good open house can get you buyers and sellers both, even if it's not the hottest thing ever. So let's walk through these slides and then we're gonna get into some details of that uh, Project X folder I sent you. And uh, you'll have to excuse me, I have a little bit of a cold today. So uh, we will get through it though. So here's the reality. Obviously we know most experienced agents seem to avoid doing a lot of open houses on their own listings. Based on past per experience, they say that it's a waste of time. Well, if you do them wrong, they're absolutely a waste of time. And by the way, I've been doing open houses since the first weekend I was in the business, and I still do open houses. So for those of you that, and I have agents that make fun of me, uh, that sell less real estate than me, most of them, but uh, they, 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 oh, well, you're sitting in your own open houses? Boy, you must be slow. And I think, well, actually, no, I'm not slow. I am using my time efficiently and showing my seller I care, showing my database that I care, because I have picked up listings. Some of you guys have heard this story. I picked up a million dollar listing uh, two years ago. It's my biggest sale or second biggest sale of 2020 uh, based on someone that I don't even know how they found me on LinkedIn. They were connected with me through LinkedIn. They had an agent, won't mention the name of the agent, but they sell a lot of real estate and they're at a big brand. And they saw, their, they saw me posting about one of my open houses. And they said, my agent doesn't do open houses. And I'm fire, I fired my agent based on your post. And I laughed. I'm like, I don't even know who this person is. And they said, you do open houses on your listings. My agent won't do them. I'm switching agents. Didn't even interview, fired his agent without a conversation. I sold the place in three weeks. So that's not to say I'm a better agent, but I am doing activity that some other agents won't. So no one is too busy for an open house. And for those of you guys that are newer 
or that are young and, you know, in age or is experience level. I always love when I hear an agent say, well, you know, no one in my database is buying. I'm like, well, then get, get more people in your database. Uh, that's how you do it. So newer agents, though, I feel for you because when you get stuck with the open house, quote unquote, opportunity, um, that a, a actual listing agent is holding all the cards and didn't, didn't, didn't stack the deck in your favor, um, you also get the short end of the stick. So that doesn't win for you either. We're going to put some stop gaps in place today to make sure that doesn't happen to you again, but we have to have everyone on board and understand what those are. So those two things together kind of perpetuate the stereotype that open houses don't work. My experience personally, I've been coached on how to do great open houses. I have added pieces on top of that that work and I get listings, I get buyers, I get attention from my database uh, in a positive manner, and they can work, they do work, and I have sold my own listings to unrepresented buyers at open houses. If you have a seller that is cool with dual agency, and the buyer's cool with it, uh, literally, I've sold my own listings at open houses, and I picked up a lot of clients that I never would have met otherwise. Um, so a well-done open house, it's going to expose the listing to more buyers, that's job one. It can bring in offers, but most importantly, will expose you to more buyers and sellers if you do these following steps. So let's get into them. And by the way, guys, this is being recorded. You will get a copy of it. And then this one will be public because we're not sharing uh, personal information today. So there will be this will go right on YouTube as well. Um, so if you are a guest uh, watching this later and you're wondering, well, this was item number three in the series, where's number two? Number two uh, is only for exit realty agents. They can individually choose to forward you that, that uh, video that we did yesterday. All these videos build, all these trainings build on each other for this month. Uh, but let's start with the very basic stuff. This is the first problem. I see listings being added to the open house list in our office and in the MLS on Friday. What does that do? You have missed the game. You got to get them in very, very early to make a good impression on the online market, let alone all the stuff we're going to talk about in steps two through 11. But you've got to get in the MLS early, at least the Thursday night before. So you're already too late for this weekend, at least the Thursday night before, and preferably Tuesday or Wednesday. You want to start building up that hype because what happens is a good buyer's agent or a smart buyer will be looking for these open houses. And a lot of the portals do have the banners that say, and you, some can search for open houses. Obviously, our beautiful app, Zenlist, that we provide to all our clients, there's literally a button that all the open houses for the weekend come up. So if you're doing this on Friday, some of the portals won't even pick it up till Friday night. Guess what happens? The clients have already made the list. Their agent may have already sent them stuff. You've missed the mark. And more importantly than any of that, you probably didn't do any of the rest of these steps that will help this become an actually effective open house. So you can do this the week prior. Get the list. You see how to find it right on uh, exitstrategymovesyou.com. Talk to the agent. Get it set up. Get it in the MLS. Okay. This obviously bumps it up on Zillow and the other sites gives them the open house banner, and the buyer's agents send their buyers out based on these lists. So that's important. I think we've covered that, and that makes sense. Got to get it in early. This is guerrilla marketing, item two. Flyers in the area. How have I picked up a couple buyers and a couple sellers over the years? Putting flyers up. Coffee shops, corner stores, wherever else you can get permission to put a flyer up but not just a spray and pray flyer, a flyer with the, depending on who you are, and we'll talk about that in a second. It is a flyer to meant to show everybody else in the area that you're gonna do the open. Maybe they want, they obviously already like the area. They live there or shopping there. They're, they're around there for work. Something's going on that they're there. But in that flyer, you wanna have either the text code from exit, if you are the actual listing agent, or if you are the buyer age or the seller's guest host, we're going to call it the guest host that's doing it, I would love to see you have your own information there. And that's not going to be that the uh, property specific text code. That's going to be your Zen link, that QR code. I'll remind you how to get that in a second. 
Uh, that could be your digital business card, but we want something special that it's going directly to you because you're the one doing the work. And no offense to our listing agents, because I'm one of them, but if the buyers, this if this guest host is going to be the one doing the work that day, they should be the ones getting the leads that day. So this is a great time to also start using the language open house event. So it's not just an open house. This is an event. You can get pre-approved on site. Now that requires either a lender on standby that day or a lender on site with you. Well, what works? A lender on site with you. The great thing about having a, a nice lender friend with you on site, they can help unpack. Uh, uh, poor Abraham got stuck with helping me unpack last night for my open house. If you've got a, a door that you're going to be opening or running up and down a flight of stairs or just somebody to talk to in the slow time or hold the tripod or camera because you're going to be doing some social media. We're going to talk about that in a second. You, It's lovely to have that guest host with you and that key person, a lender. They're going to get leads off this too if it's worked out right. They can give away a little prize or some food. They can do anything like that. And it's for you. It's like, oh, yeah. I'm also, this is an event and I have a lender right with me. They can get you pre-approved on site. And obviously you have all these cool tools like start your home search now, get a free market analysis on site. I'm going to show you how to do an area report and RPR in a moment, discover recent sales in the neighborhood. It's not just if you want this property, it is if you are interested in anything related to real estate, come in to this event. So secondly, or thirdly, third pair uh bullet point here. It is maybe a lender. As we said, you can have a home inspector with you, a contractor or an attorney. Those people are less likely to show up and also less likely to be engaged, but it's an option to do, especially if this is what I would call a not so fresh listing. Some might say stale. Um, get people in the door that may have already seen the property or know that that may not be the one for them. You can do a basically a home buyer seminar at an open house. So your sellers should be delighted to have an activity like that there that'll get more bodies in the door that may have decided that wasn't necessarily the property for them and they kind of bypass it. Well, now they're in it, maybe they'll love it. So think about doing something where you are repurposing your time there. It is not wasted time if you are creating a mini workshop feel. Even if no one, God forbid, but nobody shows up to your open house, you have a group there answering questions online. You can do a Facebook Live. We'll talk about that in a second. That mini workshop deal has been highly effective for me over the years. I did not do that last night. Transparently, that was a um, an open house designed to beat the snow, which then we didn't have any snow today apparently so far, but it was effective regardless. It could have been even better. I always, I will, always will beat myself up before I beat anybody else up. It could have even been better with a lender on site. Next up, door knocking or direct mail. Now, I know we're in the type of market right now where you're going, oh, my gosh, do I, you know, do I have money for stamps? Do I want to spend money on stamps? Is, door, is direct mail effective? Well, digital door knocking using Remind. We showed you several times over the past couple of weeks how to pull data on the neighborhood, and about 20% of those folks have email. Well, guess what? Uh, right in Remind? Well, guess what? Wouldn't that be a nice e-blast? with a digital flyer, guess who can make you a flyer? And by the way, they're already right in the expert marketing suite, but you may want to do something even more special. Amanda, your wonderful in-house graphic designer, uh, does such a good job with that kind of stuff. She, I pay for that service from her for you to have those. But what doesn't work, <laughs> not to beat a dead horse, but if you plan this Thursday night, the lender probably can't make it. Amanda's going to be stressed. You know, it's just it, that you're not pulling the data. So think about it. Work backwards from the beginning, from a bird's eye view and say, if I've got all this stuff Nick's telling me to do to make this effective, and this, by the way, I did do, um, was that I blasted the neighborhood. And I got about 200 uh, blasts out. I have a market analysis request from that. Um, I don't know if anybody that walked through it, that it was a buyer last night was from that, but I did get a, well, can you tell me what my place is worth? Wink, wink. Okay, that's great. So think about that remind. You don't have to spend any money to do it. Uh, but also, here's another thought. As we launch our property tax appeal portal in the coming weeks, wouldn't it be great if you said, hey, we can even do a you know a little tax appeal workshop 
get some seller neighbors in because wouldn't it be great if not only that sign is there out front but now there's two or three around it um you don't need to wait for that property tax bill portal you can just talk to your favorite attorney that it does understands the process even if they don't necessarily do it themselves but if you've got somebody hounding you that's a property tax appeal uh attorney or somebody like that that wants to do one or just your traditional real estate attorney that understands the process great idea for this open house all right let's talk about signage and i need to blow my nose so hold on one second I swear, I'm, it's not COVID, so you guys can come to the happy hour tonight that I'm that I'm throwing, and, and you'll be safe. Um, all right, so directional signs the day of. I'm real big on this, guys. Um, you, if you came last night, I think there were four or five of you total that came last night. I appreciated you coming. Uh, couldn't miss that there was an open house. Some people do balloons. That's cute. I just do a bunch of directional signs. Now, before I get several questions about it, yes, we have a few very generic, very cheap directional signs at the office. You have to ask Laura where they're hidden away. Uh, we don't have very many. Guys, please invest $75 to $100 in one to two directional signs with your own name and phone number on them. It looks, it's to me, it's like the branding should be you, not us. And not if you're, no offense again to the listing agents, but not the listing agents stuff. If you are a buyer's agent as sitting a guest open house, um, why are you not promoting yourself? Um, I have people that literally, you know, they've seen the signs of one of our agents that that has done a couple open houses for me. And they're like, I thought that was your listing because this this agent signs were everywhere. So just because it says the listing agent sign out front uh, in front of the house, don't feel like that's the only branding that can be there. You should be, you can't take their sign down. Please don't do that. But you can have your directional signs up and you have to have a lot of directional signs. It just makes your sellers feel better. It makes the neighbors that may be looking for a listing agent go, wow, this person is everywhere. So they don't have to be big or fancy. I will have an entire class on signage in 30 Days to Greatness because there's a lot of stuff I do with signage that's a little different. Um, but don't think that you you know, should just be throwing generic stuff up. I want it branded to you. Spend the money. It's worth it. Um, all right. So then on that signage, uh, you can't have, I don't want you, just told you to spend money, but don't spend money on custom signage particular to a property. Everything can be just be branded to you. We'll go more into that later. You can always put, throw a piece of paper on it that says a little bit more information. We'll talk about that the, the day we do the signage class. I don't want to get too into the details of that yet because I have visual aids for that actual day. For this today though, this is key. This next point. Um, let me go back because I just hit the wrong button. I only put text Nick for more info or access or text Nick for access. We're going to talk about that specific language in a second. And then your cell phone number. I'm not saying call me. I'm not giving out a text code that it then has, has to have me sitting there looking at it. We'll talk about the text codes and where to put them correctly later. It's just a simple text Nick for access. Okay. The reason why is we absolutely want to get everyone's phone number. This is where so many agents fail. I walk into an open house for a competitor and sometimes it's for you guys. And I just cringe when I see number one, that not enough information or, uh, on the property and not enough information on the agent because that's your day to shine. But number two, it's like the door's propped open. Um, there's a handwritten sign. I just gave you templates for the signage, I'll sh uh, for the signs that you put up on the doors. Um, please, please, please be smart and also be safe by having the front door secure and having them text you for access. Yes, it may mean you need to hustle up and down a couple flights of stairs or buzz them in. Um, if you're in a multi-ability, if you're in a single family home, still lock the door. You have to, they have to, un uh, get you to unlock it and also we'll talk, talk to you about the additional information that you're going to put up in the house in a second um again the value target here is being the sellers in addition to buyers um now i want to flip this screen a little bit here up last point is so important again only your cell phone number and say text 
blank person text the person that's um hosting the open house for if for access you just will never get accurate information from people if you're asking to do a sign-in okay it's just and i've even had the ipad with like oh and you the digital sign-in people are sitting there going like you can't i don't think you can see me right now but like punch, trying to punch on the ipad they're dropping the ipad there's a line of people sometimes it's just awful get everybody's cell phone number we're going to show you how to follow up with them later okay next piece next piece social media so you absolutely want to be talking about this open house in advance all right all over your own social media but i do on occasion do a paid boost as well um there's going to be a whole class on social media i would just make sure that if you do a paid boost that you do it that it has lead capture that there's lead capture not that it's just spray and pray but there's a you know text me for more information or here's the text code if i'm the actual host or here's my zen link uh or here's my digital business card something to that effect so that if you're paying for the boost it's not just about that property it's about lead capture everything we're going to talk about today focuses on lead capture so i'm not going to really go too much into these paid boosts because quite frankly right now i'm not doing them um, I'm really just focusing on natural organic traffic and then really that neighborhood guerrilla style marketing. Um, absolutely, if you are the listing agent, I would love to see you go into the MLS and do reverse prospecting. Um, there's right in the MLS, Connect MLS, there is a tutorial on how to do that. Um, also in Zenlist, you literally click on your listing and there's a button to do the reverse prospecting. The problem in Zenless, though, is so few agents have it. So that means so few consumers have it. Um, that's the beauty of why we think it's such a great product for us. But it also means if you're only reverse prospecting in Zenless, because they make it so darn easy to do it, you're getting a very reduced population to target in terms of the reverse prospecting. And what are you doing as the listing agent for that? You're trying to get the agents that have their buyers selecting that property or that have, that have sent them their buyer that property to get them to come to the open house. It's a nice secondary tool. Um, it's not your primary bread and butter. And also it's really kind of mean for you as the listing agent to have the uh, nice guest host do it. Cause guess what? That's not gonna get the guest host any extra uh, deals unless the person that you're reverse prospecting, their client actually hates them and they're looking for a new agent. That has happened to me before. But reverse prospecting might be best done by the actual listing agent. And guys, I do see there's some questions. I'll come back to those at the end. I am going to get us all the way through first today before I go to the end. Um, okay, let's also talk about group open houses, like creating kind of like a event environment. Um, I don't love broker open houses anymore, by the way. This class is for regular open houses. Broker open houses tend to attract brokers that need a sandwich not brokers that have a buyer. So um, you can feed whoever wants to come to this. You absolutely can do this as both a broker open and a regular open combined at once. But just remember, your bread and butter is going to be the consumers coming through. But you can absolutely see what other agents are doing in open house that day in the area and maybe coordinate with them or maybe just magically have yours right around the same time. Uh, because maybe they're doing some prospecting initially as well. But wouldn't it be nice if you were the one doing the prospecting and getting the attention and your open house had the most people? Just saying. Okay, realtor groups, et cetera. Uh, they're really not as popular as they used to be. Neighborhood groups are. Neighborhood groups are. So if you are part of a neighborhood page, a community page, throw that up there. Uh, if there's a, if it's in a high rise and you've got access to that building's um private Facebook group or public group, you can absolutely do something there as well. Um, let's talk more about social though, non-paid stuff, free, 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 my favorite price, free 99. If you are not doing Facebook Live, Instagram stories and social, not just in advance, but actually there at it, you're missing out. It's so cool to have your own database, see that you are in the business, you're enjoying the business, you're good at what you do, you're, you're marketing property, opening them up to opportunities. So I love that idea of the static permanent post in advance and then the actual story the day of. Uh, I still love Facebook Live. Uh, I still do love Facebook Live. 
Uh, TikTok, you've got to have at least a thousand followers to go live. So that may not be uh, easily done for some of you yet. We'll, we'll hopefully get you there eventually. Uh, Facebook and Instagram stories are for everybody. And be smart. Don't just post. Add the text code to the property or add your Zen link or add your digital business card. Something that's a call to action that has lead capture. Moving forward, I will not talk to you guys about anything that doesn't have a call to action and lead capture both. Because if you're not telling people what to do, that's going to get you business and you're just spraying and praying, there's no clear message, aka call to action, you're wasting your time. And also, if you have a call to action, but it's not automated. So what did we do yesterday, guys? We talked for over an hour about automating your data, automating your lead capture, your funnels. Okay, that's what's going to happen uh, if you use these tools properly. So last bullet point on that, I love the text codes. If you're using the individual listing, it's not websites, it's the individual listing marketing package. Um, if you are the listing agent, if you are the guest host, use something else, AKA your digital business card, a wise agent landing page, uh, something the Zen list, use your Zen link, something like that. Don't do the individual text code if you are the guest host, because that's going, where's that lead going? To the, the actual listing agent. So be careful with what you do, that it's actually coming to you. And obviously if it's coming to you, you've hopefully got the integration synced up that we showed you yesterday. Okay, this is a no brainer, but parts of it I think are not. Obviously, you're going to say hello to everybody when they come in, right? Duh. But how's that going to look? Uh, you have the Exit Realty Connect app. There's another upcoming session uh, all about that app. It's great to have Exit Realty Connect loaded on your phone, have Zenless loaded on your phone, have all that stuff ready to go. So if someone asks a question, you say, oh, you know, I can send you my digital buyer presentation. I can send you an invite to Zenlist, even though we're potentially going to have Zenlist, uh, the QR code already there. We're going to go into these digital assets in a second. Um, but if you've got that stuff at the ready, it makes it a lot easier to not even have to follow up with some people later, even though you want to get their contact information. So get the quick lead or get the digital business presentation, the digital buyer presentation and seller presentation ready. Um, and they're right there in the Exit Realty Connect app for you. Um, then let them roam without you. You know, you can ask a couple of questions. I always love when agents are like, well, what's the script? I'm like, there is not a formal script for an open house. I do have a couple of little cheesy scripts for you in the coaching blog. I don't like any of them because some people don't want to talk to you. So the, the less you do to be confrontational, the better. But at the same time, some people do. They're curious. So we're going to talk in a second about how to have all that information ready. One of the things that I love to do is get either an RPR, a real pro, uh, Realtors Property Resource property report ready, uh, or the neighborhood report is actually even better than that. Uh, and then also all my items of value at the ready for them. So it's great to send as a follow-up the digital buyer presentation and the Zen link, but have them ready and available right there. I always ask for feedback on the way out. I do maybe have a couple trigger questions like, oh, have you been looking a while? I love it when people start out by saying, are you working with an agent? That just makes it so clear why you're there. Don't do that. That could be, and some of you that were there last night heard me not ask that question except for one person because it was clearly the one person that hovered, that was interactive, asking questions that they should have known if they had a good agent. And she wasn't working with an agent. She was unrepresented. Um, so that was genius of, you know, in general, not of me, but of me learning from other agents that did it wrong, listening, going, oh my God, this agent is so aggressive or so unknowledgeable about the area. Do your research in advance. Oh, look, that's the next slide. So be a neighborhood expert. Now, are you going to be the expert on every neighborhood in the world? No, but please don't roll up to the open house. As the listing agent, I certainly hope you wouldn't. Uh, but even as a guest host, please don't roll up as a, a neighborhood done. Uh, you want to be a expert. And how do you get to do that? Well, if you go into Cloud CMA and you click on, instead of doing the seller 
presentation, there's like a buyer report, a buyer tour. That's got some helpful stuff. It's a little bit to me clunky. Um, you know what's not clunky? RPR, Realtors Property Resource. We have not talked very much about it. I'm going to show you what that Realtors Property Resource report looks like. Read it, have a copy ready, and it will give you the breakdown of what's going on in the area. Also, the actual little exit website on the listing has all the area restaurants where the schools are. ZList has information on the schools. Between those factors, you should not be unknowledgeable by the time you get there, but drive the neighborhood in advance. You should be over there anyway. What? A several days before putting up your flyers. Can't put your signs up days before. They'll get stolen. Or you'll get ticketed by the city or the township, but you can absolutely put up your uh, flyers in the area and get to know the bus stop, the coffee shop, the restaurant. I always like to name drop a little thing or two that's in the area that's interesting to people because A, they may not know the area and B, <laughs> maybe they do know the area and when they ask you a question you don't know. You can't be the absolute master of everything, but transportation, parks, schools, um, and one or two fun things that you liked about the area when you drove it, uh, that's what you need to do. So Zenless app, we're gonna talk about that versus the text code. Um, here's my recommendation. I talked to some of you that were at the open house last night. I've gone back and forth on this. This is one of those things where I had to experience it myself. If you have a coach reading out of a book or there hasn't sold a house in 20 years, this is where they fail. Um, I've played with this. I've had seller feedback on this. Here's my recommendation as to if you are the agent at the open house, whether to have the text code for the property or your Zen link. If you are the actual listing agent, the text code for the property is the best idea. The reason why is it's all about that property. It's got branded to you. It's obviously got the lead capture. That lead's going to come directly to you. Uh, sync up with your wise agent. It's going to say which property it's from. Great stuff. If you are not the listing agent, do your Zenlink QR code. That is a great way to get their contact information on top of the fact you've already got it from them texting to get into the property. It's great information. But here's why I don't like that as your primary feature up at the open house if you are the actual listing agent. What does that tell your seller? That tells your seller, oh man, this guy is there or this girl is there just pushing out for buyers. They're not trying to, what is the primary reason that the seller wants you there? To sell their property. They really, you know, even some of my friends probably care about my business, but don't care about my business when I'm selling their property. They want their house sold. So keep that in your back pocket, the QR code, if you are the listing agent. If you're not the listing agent, why are you promoting that text code? You should be promoting your information, which the Zenlink is great for that. All right, off my soapbox on that. Let's talk about comparables. I don't necessarily love the idea that you have comparables on site uh, if they're not great. If they are great, absolutely have them on site. But the Realtors Property Resource, uh, the neighborhood report, is a great kind of buffer. And I'll show you exactly what that looks like in a second. Um, we're not going to talk about Cloud CMA today. We are actually I'm working on that this weekend for you. Let's talk about the marketing in terms of the other feel of the house. Get there early, have everything set up. You don't need a $3,000 spread. You know, your lender may contribute. Last night, if you go back to my original picture uh, of Victoria and Abraham, uh, I had little water bottles, those uh, little aluminum ones that, that I have uh, for uh, strategic title. Some of you guys have taken more than one of them. Feel free to use them. There's not going to be enough of them, I think, for you to do your open house. Bottles of water are cute. Cheap bottles of wine. I don't necessarily love food because food gets dropped on the floor. Food gets spilled. Uh, alcohol, don't open it there. I think that is not a look. Um, and that's coming from someone that loves to drink. So <laughs> let's be real. Love a glass of red wine, not at a house with white carpet or, you know, anything else. That's a no. But just be conscious of it should look nice. Hopefully the house is picked up, but you're picked up. 
you got there early. You're not sweating because you ran to get around in there. Uh, we had some jokes last night about running up and down a flight of stairs. I got a little heated. Uh, you just need to be conscious of you look good. This is a representation of you as much as it is the house. I have little uh, badge barn name, ba name badges that cost 10 bucks. Um, didn't use mine last night, but normally do. Uh, just a nice reflection of you. Little snacks that they can take with them. You can bake. If you are running low on money, guys, bake cookies. Guess who went to Aldi back in the day and baked cookies? You know I don't bake. Baked cookies and made little, ba little bags that people could take home with my business card on them. I got real creative. If you were on a budget, let me help you. I've, done, I've been there too. I feel you. If you are not on a budget or if you are short on time, get your lender to help you. They should be more than happy to do that part of it. What did we tell you about the database the other day that you should have a category called vendors? That is great timing to turn around and click that button and send to your 12 favorite vendors. Hey, you've been bugging me for some loan leads. I'm bugging you for some marketing. Okay. Last but not least, and then we're going to get into the assets that I sent you. Follow up, follow up. If you did all this work of steps one through 10, and then you don't follow up afterwards, you wasted your time. Um, I do a very quick open house. Last night was an hour and a half. This, this is a controversial statement, but I do this regularly with a lot of success. I call my open houses power hours. They're normally only an hour. I see some of you and some of our lovely friends and our competitors spending three, four hours at the same property. My God, I mean, these people, I know they have a life that are buyers and potential tenants or whatever, but they should be able to get there within an hour, an hour and a half if they're really motivated. And if you picked a good time of the day, like midday on the weekend, you're going to get that brunch traffic. You're going to get that post-church traffic. You know, whatever your area looks like, you don't need to be there all day. I used to do three open houses in a day because most of my stuff that I'm showing you today, it can be printed out in advance if you prepped and you get it done and you're out of there. So I don't want to be there all day, but I do then, if I'm only going to be there an hour, an hour and a half, guess what I have time to do that day? Follow up. So here's what I do. If I have tricked them, uh, tricked my little, little buddies there at my vendors into giving like a prize or something like that. That's a great way to further confirm, you know, with people that they really need to digitally sign in by texting you to get in. But, 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 um, whatever that is, if there's no prize, because a lot of times, even if I had a lot of time, the lender brought bottles of water and snacks or something or whatever, um, I follow up with each individual person because guess what? Every single person gave me their information to get in the property, right? Every single person that was remotely interested in the property, they wanted the rest of the information on the property, right? I'm going to show you in a second what I have for them that made them want to text that special code. Guess what? Following up afterwards with Zenlink, even if you add it on site, say, hey, here's the Zenlink, here's the real property resource uh, piece. And here is my digital buyer presentation link. I would love to work with you. That's all you need. Three items. That is a lot. That's a lot of value that no one else is doing right now. I don't see hardly any follow-up because I have my clients going to open houses and I tell them, don't tell them you're working with me. I want to see what people say. This is what, this is, you should tell them that they're working. You know, normally you would do the opposite. I trick some of my closer friends that are, kind of my little kitchen cabinet of of uh of people that I consult with. I trick them into saying, I tell them, I shouldn't say trick them, I ask them to go into the properties that they're looking at if they're not with me that weekend and not say anything. Um and then see what the follow-up is. So and it's just like you know nothing. Absolutely nothing. Uh and half the time there's not even a sign in sheet. Just sad. So we're not going to do that here. I'm not going to waste your time. I want you to have the best experience and I want the consumer to have the best experience. All right. So the minute that they texted you, obviously it was in your phone, but you don't have it programmed in yet, right? Well, when you tech, when you have everything synced up in your wise agent CRM, if they've used that text code once they're in the property, not texting yourself, but using the text code to get more information on the property, 
it's already in your wise agent CRM. It doesn't have a name. It just has their number. But what do you have? My friends, go into the coaching blog. You have forewarned. You have forewarned. Look them up. Look them up on forewarned. You got their cell phone number. That's what forewarned is for. So that is huge. Then what you're going to do, you're going to put in whatever information you've got. I do when I follow up with each person by text, I do ask for their email address. And I say, you know, I may even have some more information for you. Or if they ask a specific question, oh, let me get your email address. Let me get your email address, right? Because then what happens? They go into your wise agent CRM automatically. If they've got their email address, it can do the lead enhancement, which will pull up their social media if they've got any. And then you can start marketing them on an ongoing basis. We've already got their cell phone number though, because that's great. What would that be wonderful for? Wise text. How did I follow up with the people from last night? <laughs> Very easily. Literally did a by source in Wise Agent. And I unfortunately can't open that up right now for you because every time I open up Wise Agent, it has all the phone numbers. And that is personal information YouTube doesn't like to give out. So we can't, we want to publish this to the public and show our agent friends. But just so you guys know, on the left hand side in your contact list, you would click on source, and the source is exit corp. And that's all your text codes. You can also just go in the Exit Resource Center and see them, but it's not automated unless you've synced up like we showed you yesterday. And that is the beauty of Wise Agents, the only CRM that works with our text codes. So you then would be able to set them, a, set them up in a drip campaign if you wanted to. And then show your agent, show your sellers the stats. You know what I did last night? I sent my sellers just the screenshot of all the emails that came back, I'm no, sorry, all the, well, from corporate, all the emails came back of the people asked, texting the information once we got in the house. So I know that's a little um, confusing to do without showing you, uh, but I just want to be able to make this video public. So I'm going to get to questions in one moment. Um, let's do this. Let me get into the toolkit that you have. This is only for our agents. So if you are guests, Hopefully your coach, if you've got a coach, will show you something similar. This is not rocket science, guys. I did these basic templates and shared them with you so that you and Amanda can make a pretty one for you, okay? I am not a graphic designer. Amanda is. Um, I'm, a, I'm a techie realtor, so I've got the technology. Amanda can make it pretty. Um, that's why we pay for her for you. But at the top, I've got just the logo. This is the open house entrance buzzer or door template for you. You can adjust this however you want. I do like to put the hours of it just in case people are wandering past going, well, maybe we should come after lunch because that's one of the first things people are going to think of. Well, how long is this thing going for? And what is it? What is it? So I do have some basic information, some teaser info, but then I just have my cell phone number. That's whether you are the host or whether you're the listing agent, whoever's sitting there, obviously that's the person, that's their inform that's the person that needs to have that information there. So that's a, that's a no-brainer, right? And that can also be on the directional signs. But once you're inside, once you're inside, here is that template. And remember, there are Victoria and Abraham sitting in front of that. Um, I normally have it in a real fancy picture frame. Some of you guys have been to that, that $3 million uh, beautiful single family home I, I sold to, a, well, actually Andrew Coppin sold as the buyer's agent. I represented the seller. Um, we had this beautiful framed um thing around that uh that piece well of course someone aka me dropped it and broke it uh so i got a new frame but you can just put it on the countertop don't overthink it you'll systematize it later but this is the key language we are now paperless all property photos floor plans tours condo docs if it's a condo if it's a single family home maybe it's got floor plans uh buildings you know schematics etc anything like that on this property can be found by texting and then there is that code from the expert marketing suite that we showed you two days ago. See, these are all these these are trainings are all building on top of each other. Now, this is the controversial part. I probably would not do this code, uh, or I'm sorry, do not do the QR code from Zenlist because what did we say? If you are the listing agent, you really want to focus on that text code and then have this other information in the back pocket. And you guys saw in that little video I showed you right at the beginning, that text code that has all the interactive cool stuff. It's got the documents, the PDFs that you put in. Uh, it's just it, because here's the thing. No agent should in any good conscience have a 
book of paper that they're handing out. Because where does that go, guys? You guys are all buyer's agents too, right? They go in the garbage. Half the time, I literally see people, they're in the hallway outside the unit or sitting out in the front yard. They, they, people didn't want it, but they darn well wanted the information to look at later. You get them, guys. That's how you get them. And you do a better job for the consumer, both your seller and the buyers. So that's the genius of the text codes and the technology that Exit Corporate uh, really worked with me on to do, take it to the next level. Because I said, guys, I really want to do PDFs. They're like, well, you can do links. You can have links. I'm like, no, I want PDFs. And all of a sudden it worked. So that we showed you how to do that. Please implement it. A lot of people that came through that open house last night were like, what? How do you do that? I'm like, oh, it's an Exit technology. Wink, wink. It is. It's only us. Next piece, for those of you that are guest hosts, we love our guest hosts. A little bit different language. We are now paperless. Please register here for more property information and get access to area data, off-market listings, and more. The reality is you're going to have to do a little more follow-up with those folks because if they're looking for that information and you're giving them the Zenlink, it's not going to be in the Zenlink. That's just giving them the, the sign-in to Zenlink. The ultimate version of this as a guest host would be a landing page, would be a landing page. We will have a training on landing pages next week. I don't know what day yet. It will be one of our 30 days to greatness because Wise Agent is the best, best landing pages of any CRM. And they actually are pretty easy to set up. You just got to understand them. Um, so I can show that to you as an alternate, but that is one of those things where that really is going to take a couple of days. But the beauty of that is even as a guest host, you can do one of those. You don't have to control the MLS or be the listing agent for those. So this template for the guest hosts is right there as well. And then we've got two more things. In my text code as the listing agent, I now include the full MLS sheet. Why? We, we almost ran out of MLS sheets last night. I printed 20. I had two left. Um, so I printed the full MLS sheet. Why the full one? Well, it's got my contact information on there, right? And it's got a little bit more information. I put in the broker private remarks. You can't put it on the consumer remarks, but in the broker private remarks, look at this last sentence. For a full multimedia presentation of more information, text that code to 85377. I use that as a cheat sheet for myself when I'm out and about. And it's also great to hand to a buyer because guess what? Nobody else is using those, right? So it's a special thing. Um, so that is, is what I do, is I put the full MLS sheet on there. And so it's right in the text code. Last and very much not least, and then I will look at questions quickly, is what is this? For those of you guys that are like, well, I want to give out more information. This is it. Plug and play. This is the RPR, Realtors Property Resource, Neighborhood Report. The Neighborhood Report. What a great thing not to print out all 11 pages, even though I don't charge you guys for copies. We've got copies in every office. I will not be happy to see 40 copies of this 11 page report sitting in the copy machine. And more importantly, neither will the earth. Save the earth. Nobody wants to pick this up and take it home and lug it around to the other places they're going to go see or if they're walking their dog, but they darn well want the information, don't they? This would be great to put right in the uh, text code through the expert marketing suite. But let me show you very quickly how to get that. You just go into Realtors Property Resource. You go into the MLS, you click on that little tool box right there. And then there's RPR, Realtors Property Resource. I'm getting certified in this tool. It is not the easiest to learn, but just so you guys know today, all you do is type in the property address, whether it's your listing or not, type in the property address, and then you're going to click on report, create report. And then you're going to click on neighborhood. And it's got HUD compliant information from third parties that you don't have to generate or give. A lot of fascinating reports on fascinating information on the area. And it is branded to you, whether you are the listing agent, the buyer's agent, et cetera. Also great information, guys, just in general. Um, there's even a mobile version. We'll have a training on RPR. As well, I feel like it's going to be 60 days of greatness, not 30, but I won't bore you with any more. Uh, that is what I would do today to master the open house. Um, if you would like, I can put a copy of 30 days to greatness right in that uh, in our folder. So I'll go ahead and do that right now.
So that is in the Project X Open House Assets folder. So you've got this permanently right in your folder. Everybody at the office has access to this. All right, quick questions or two. What is the purpose for reverse prospecting? Good question. Um, Edna, very simply, reverse prospecting. I'll show you how to do it in uh, Zenless, even though I don't think Zenless is the best place because so few agents and consumers have access to Zenless. We love that because it's a competitive advantage because I pay for it for you. But not every agent by any means, or not every consumer by any means has it, which means the reverse prospecting there is not going to be as, as, as solid. Um, but either way, reverse prospecting means you are prospecting agents that had a client that was sent the property or selected the property once sent. So how does that look? Click on my listings when you're in Zenlist. And then again, you can go into Connect MLS and do this as well. It's a little bit more complicated. That's why there's a tutorial in the tutorials there. You then click on the listing. And you can see this is at a hot couple of days. Um, and so listing statistics. And then you would click on reverse prospecting to have the agents that you can contact. You can literally just click contact right there. Isn't that easy? And by the way, this can get sent to your seller. Great information for them. Guys, thank you so much for being here today. Uh, how do you get their email? Why have them text over call? Oh, Laura, okay, maybe I didn't make that clear. So when they are at the front door to the property, you do not want a phone call, because here's why. Aren't you getting phone calls from the rest of the world throughout that open house? It makes it very hard to figure out who's who, right? And if they're all in a line between the hours, for example, 5.30 to 7 last night, and they were saying, hi, I'm here for the open house, hi, I'm here for the open house, it's very easy for those of us that are doing a lot of deals or a lot have a lot of clients or have a life outside real estate, it's easier to search for them directly. So it's just they're right in your phone and they're a text, not a call, because we get too many other calls during it uh, that don't identify, right? And you don't want to be picking up constantly. You should be talking to the people that are there or doing your social media. So that's why it's text, not call. That is very that is road tested from years of experience. Uh, why you would want to get their email. Uh, hope How do you get their email? I'm sorry, what? How do you get their email? Like if they're just texting and we're not doing a formal um, sign-in sheet. I lie on the sign-in sheet. Nobody wants to do them. So what I do then is, is I, well, number one, you've got forewarned to kind of start the reverse prospecting, or sorry, wrong word, to, you can farm them later, get some information, but more sure. Anybody that's there that had any sort of interest in the property or area, oh, let me get your email and I can send you that information. They're not going to lie if they were interested, right? Or if they wanted a raffle prize, et cetera, et cetera, if you're doing a raffle. Good question. Guys, this was super fun to put together for you guys based on live experience. I absolutely, Abe, did send to every guest except the lovely realtors that were there. Um, already did send a mass mass text through uh, YSEX. So I will have a YSEX training too. We just got so much coming up. You guys have a great evening. If I don't see you at the happy hour, otherwise I will see you at George Street Pub tonight. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.